So Yu-Gi-Oh is a thing in my life that I really, really want to be good at, just, you know, without putting in any effort or, or money, if that makes sense. I have a great time playing the game, but it just gets a little exhausting when the cards look like this nowadays. And, you know, I'm, I'm not reading all that. Like, this card alone is 181 words long, and that's not even mentioning the Panda Goons that it's usually played with. And that's only the start of it. We got combo lines with alternatives if you get interrupted, specific interactions, timings. It, it's literally law school levels of comprehension to get everything proper. And I'll, I'll be real with you, I'm getting kind of old and way too lazy to read, which apparently is still pretty in line with the average Yu-Gi-Oh player, but you get my point. But in just three short months, one of the biggest Yu-Gi-Oh tournaments will be coming to LA, the 250th YCS. Doing well at events like these takes an insane amount of practice and dedication to the game. People fly across the country, spend months prepping, and even create entire video series covering their journeys for the event. Can I really stack up against competitors like these? Mm, no. But can I figure out other ways to keep a competitive edge? Mm, maybe. Clearly, I'm not up to learn the game properly. But what if it's not me that has to learn it? While playing at local card shops and doing your own diligence is an invaluable part of becoming a better player, there's a wealth of data online that's ripe to be used for teaching an AI what Yu-Gi-Oh is all about. But a lack in conviction, and to a certain extent, basic literacy, can be made up for with the power of machine learning. And so, in theory, with the right processing and techniques, the insane amount of data accessible should produce a KaibaCorp level of dual and bot, and should be enough to top this YCS. So it's not like I'm going around setting mirror forces and magic cylinders. I'm not that out of touch with the game. I've actually got quite the selection of decks. Like my warrior deck here, it's got a cool control-based strategy and thrives off of a longer grind game. Or my spellcaster one, based on the darker sides of religious cults, which is also centered around a 4-star 1500 attack white blonde girl. Okay, alright, patterns aside, look, I mean they're both cool decks, and I play ones with more traditional monsters too, like my dragon one here, with a consistent mid-range strategy and... Okay, alright, alright, fine. It'd be nice to just dust off one of these for the event, but they're a bit out of date, and I want the best chances at topping, so I figured I should check out some of the new options available. So how do I plan on picking out cards for the deck? Well, there's plenty of resources and content creators I could just rip a list off of, but for the sake of science, I want to see if there's a way to stay a bit more ahead of the curve. There's an unofficial website for simulating Yu-Gi-Oh matches called Dueling Book, which offers the ability to spectate games on a ranked lap. It's a little janky, but with some screen scraping and HTML parsing, I can make a bot to watch high-ranked games and figure out which cards are being played. And by cobbling together some scripts from Selenium to automate the browser interactions and OpenCV to recognize and read certain images, I can pull together a somewhat meaningful set of data from all of this. Then, by clustering the cards the bot recorded based on win rate and co-occurrence with each other, I can come up with a visualization that looks like this. Basically, what we're looking at here is just the cards that are doing the most winning together. It looks like there's a pretty even distribution, meaning that the power levels are relatively balanced among popular decks. E except for whatever the hell this is up here. After parsing out common staples and hand traps, it looks like these cards are from the Tier Limit and Bestial archetypes, which are foreign to me, but apparently are by far the most frequent and powerful cards played at higher ranks on Dueling Book. After a little bit of quick research for validation and a sanity check, I can safely confirm that these cards are indeed the best around because what we're currently in is known as a Tier 0 format. This is when over 65% of representation in topping decks consists of just this one deck playing mirror matches against itself. So we're on the right track. It looks like we've successfully identified what's good. We can simply take the top cards from the graph and analyze the ratios in each deck. In theory, this should be terrifying to go against at a tournament, but truth be told, I'm just not really seeing it. Like, it doesn't look too crazy. It puts up like, what, two monsters? Oh my god, okay. A quick overview of some of the things this deck does. Negates summons, floodgates, removes your graveyard resources, generates an infinite source of its own graveyard resources, does all of that during both players' turns, commits tax fraud, and stole your bike when you were eight. So clearly what we have here is incredibly strong, and I'm feeling pretty good with my chances at winning with it. Okay, it's a bit of a pain to have to start from square one again, but real talk, I don't really think there's enough computing power in the world to figure out how the hell tier limit works. So, I mean, this is kind of a relief. Anyways, with tier limit gutted, the men is wide open now. Suddenly, the boogeyman keeping all the decks out of viability just went away, so now there's a lot more to choose from. By repeating the same process as last time, we end up with four high win rate, tightly clustered groups. Kashtira, Branded, Sprite, and Labyrinth. Due to recent allegations against me, which aren't at all true, but will be disproven anyways, we're just gonna skip over Labyrinth here. After having some brief practice sessions with some more experienced friends... Alright, that should be it. Go ahead, your turn. What the fu- It looks like Keshtira seems to be the most fundamentally unfair, which is exactly the kind of crutch I need here. So now that I've seen it in action, it all looks good, and I think this is the one that I want. Now we can just start ordering the cards and getting it all ready together- OH MY GOD! This, okay, you know what, just, just give me the Girl Machine deck, man. I'm just going to address this first because I'm anticipating a lot of geniuses in the comments. No, ChatGPT does not do a good job of playing Yu-Gi-Oh! and should not be used here. 
A large language model might be able to take some relevant words to the game and structure them coherently, but that's about as deep as it goes. So if the best, you know, prompt engineers or your tech gurus aren't really up to the task, well, then how can I teach an AI how to play Yu-Gi-Oh? Well, first, we're going to need a lot of data to show the bot what a proper duel is supposed to look like. There's another dueling simulator out there called YGO Pro. It's like Dueling Book, but the program itself actually enforces the rules of the game. This is good, whereas Dueling Book allows for a lot more, uh, liberties to be taken. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, get his ass, get his ass. Tokens already. <laughs> yeah, how you like it, bitch, huh? Since the AI won't be hard-coded with any game rules like only being able to normal summon once or spell speed priorities, having an automated simulator like YGO Pro keeps the bot in line by providing it only with legal moves. Without these constraints, the bot would be misplaying terribly and unable to effectively learn how to play the game at all. Again, still apparently pretty in line with the average Yu-Gi-Oh player, but uh, I digress. Another crucial feature of YGO Pro is that it supports replays. From various Discord servers, I was able to scrape together files that could be viewed from the game's client, which should serve as suitable examples of how to play. However, this data still isn't really broken down in a way that an AI can properly process. But if we look a little deeper at each file, we see that there's something called YRPX files. And when we look under the hood with the text editor, we have this scary wall of what I'm pretty sure is either nuclear launch codes or, or just Minecraft coordinates. With a little bit of decoding with functions taken from the YGO replays repository, we can actually make some sense out of this and convert it into a JSON, which looks like this much more descriptive to an actual game of Yu-Gi-Oh. The data recorded here breaks down each card played and interaction in sequential order as well as game states at every step of those interactions. Essentially what we have here is everything needed to construct a replay of a game, but in a neat organized form. What we'll be feeding this data into is called a reinforcement learning model. More classic examples of this are things like maze solving or Spider-Man swinging. The process starts by observing the agent in a given environment, in this case the agent would be our AI, and seeing how it interacts within a duel being the environment. These actions are then observed over a large number of trials and evaluated by how well they worked in achieving a defined goal, which would be winning a duel in this case. This evaluation is known as a reward function. If the way the AI played a card was effective in winning the game, then it takes note to do more of that in the future. The opposite is done when an action was bad and resulted in a loss. The AI then updates itself by changing the way it makes decisions, or its policy. So how do policies work? Well, there's something called a Markov decision process that serves as a framework too. So first, by using this replay data, I can create a baseline model for how to play Yu-Gi-Oh! This should be enough to have the AI infer those basic things that weren't hard-coded into it and to teach it general things about how to win a game, like maintaining board control or going for a combo. The baseline model can then be fine-tuned to teach it how to win specifically with our deck, Sky Strikers. This is where things get a little more complex though. At this point, we'll no longer be using replay data and allowing our agent, the AI, to make its own actions. The YGO Pro Client had to be rigged up to pi out a GUI so that commands for actual clicks could be made from the AI to interact with its environment. OpenCV was again used to figure out where and when to click on certain things based on the boxes that popped up. It was also used to read key parts of the screen to gather data on the environment of the game. The gather data is then sent to our AI along with all of the possible moves it can make at a certain moment, which then calculates which decision would be best in that situation. The AI then relays its decision back to Pyoto GUI, which will then execute the actual clicks needed to make the move happen. And there we finally have it, an actual dueling AI. So now that it's functional, we need to actually make it good. Like I mentioned before, reinforcement learning models need a large number of trials. Unfortunately, I didn't know anybody who values their free time as little as I do. So I had to take it upon myself to actually play against the AI. This really went against my whole no effort thing and was by far the most painstaking part of this project. The AI would only be as good as the opponents it played against, so I had to make sure that I had at least somewhat passable knowledge of the meta's top contenders. This kind of begs the question, if I was going to end up putting in all this effort, then why didn't I just practice with YCS normally? But at this point, I'm a ban list and way too many hours deep, so I'm just going to ride the sunken cost all the way down to the bottom. So, how to perform? Well, in the first 25 games, you better believe I sat that robot ass down hard. Yeah, undefeated, baby. I still got it. Unfortunately, this means that my model sucks. So, what went wrong here? It's pretty easy to define the reward functions in the maze solving and swinging tasks shown earlier. Whichever actions move you further forward are good, but how do we define which actions are good in a duel? Strategies for opposing decks are so varied that it can be hard to tell what indicates a winning move. Like, should I prioritize activating as many of my effects as possible? Oh, that's not good. Setting up my own board as strongly as possible? No, 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 no. Focusing on picking apart my enemy's board. All of these actions should be, in theory, ways to advance your game state, but it's hard to generalize which ones should be considered good since they can all shoot you in the foot as well. In machine learning, this is known as the credit assignment problem, where it's hard to figure out what exactly contributed to the outcome. In addition to that, looking at actions only in the context of winning or losing is too rigid for learning how to play the game. There's plenty of ways that you can make a good play but still lose and vice versa. But the current model assumes that all moves made from a loss game are bad, and all from a won game are good. So instead of approaching the goal as to win in general, what if we just focus on playing our specific deck optimally? 
As a control deck, the goal of Sky Strikers is to stop your opponent's plays and simplify the game state so you can grind out small advantages to win through. With the knowledge that this deck ultimately wins based off a card advantage, we can refine Sky Strikers' reward function to be simply having more cards than their opponent at the end of each interaction. What's important to note here is that the AI isn't actually reading each card. All it can see is how they're activated in sequence and the game states that they result in. While this sounds like a huge limitation initially, it really is all we need to be able to contextualize and evaluate the effectiveness of each decision made. An example here would be how the AI learned how Widow Anchor works, one of the deck's most powerful staple tools. In the first trial, it threw it on its own monster as it was exploring all of the options it had to play with. Realizing that it didn't result in any advantage and actually wasted a card, it figured that it was a pretty poor way to play it. But the next time it used it on my monster to take control of it, which was deemed a better play because it reduced my card count by one. But this was still a little problematic because it took away a lot of the AI's own options. By the later parts of training, the bot figured out that I could use Widow Anchor to negate my starter's effects, steal that monster, use it to make Zeke to clear up its own field to keep its own spells active, use Zeke's effect to banish one of my other monsters to further push card advantage, and to turn that into either Kagari or Shizuku to keep the turn rolling. The bot didn't know what Widow Anchor does, and it still doesn't exactly. But eventually, it was able to figure out sequences the card is most effective in from its own experience of exploring all of the options the card provided. This process went for every card in its own deck, as well as the big hitters in the decks that it played against. Ashing the Branded Fusion on not the Aluber, stopping Gigantic with Ash instead of Starter so that Ray can float into Kaina properly, choosing to Imperm over Valor to play around Tactics and Called By. It's actually insane how much nuance was able to be picked up. The choices that began as random guessing and checking became well-guided plays because of the improved reward function reinforcing them. There were a few things the AI struggled with, like identifying when to push for damage or which striker links to tag into. Fortunately, these decisions are pretty linear, so they can be card-coded in with relative ease. And with the improved knowledge of how to grind out a control game more optimally, and a constant hunt for an opening to go for lethal, the AI was finally able to take its first game. It's ready. So to tie a ribbon and wrap this project up, I went back and asked my more experienced friends what they thought. All right, so so what do you think? Dude, are you stupid? What, what do you, I'm literally that guy right now. It's like AI, deep learning, it's Tonka trucks, I don't Did know. Did you like, even read the rules? The what now? Okay, yeah, you know, in retrospect, this probably should have been a lot more obvious to me. As tempting as it would be to take inspiration from recent cheating attempts in the chess world, I don't think I have that sort of conviction in me. Y you know, among other things. So it's it's looking a little chalked. Sorry to clickbait, guys, but I don't think I'm going to be able to use this. But you know what? I might not be able to use it during my games, but that doesn't mean it didn't give me the best chances to win this thing. In the past three months, I've been exposed to more condensed Yu-Gi-Oh play than I ever have. All that research and time spent didn't just go into training the bot, I was soaking it all up too. It took engineering and ill-fated AI for me to finally take a more serious approach to the game. And in doing so, it ultimately gave me the real deal instead of something artificial. And you know what? I think I'm ready.